Hey there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Now today I've got a video topic that doesn't necessarily relate to BIM, um, but it probably relates to a lot of you out there if you're using Dropbox, which I know is a very common uh, storage program people use, otherwise you might use, say, Google Drive. Um, but essentially if you use anything with an Explorer-based interface, um, I'm gonna show you how you can automate your backup routines, um, which might be really handy for other people that run small businesses out there like myself. Um, I run a consulting business and uh, almost on a weekly basis, um, I'll be updating uh, all my files in my backup. And this is more than 30,000 files. So it's very important that I find a quick and an easy way to do it. So without further ado, um, let's actually just jump in and have a look how you can automate your Dropbox backup process. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly cover, I guess, my backup needs and why I needed to find a more efficient way to backup. Um, I'll just quickly talk about how Dropbox offers an automation process, which isn't the best, um, and I guess why I looked beyond it. And then the solution, which is gonna be a, a little program called Sync Toy, and it's free. So before you click off, because you think it's promoted or anything, no promotions, just sharing something that I think is great. Um, and I'm just gonna talk about briefly how it works and do a little demo. Um, so my backup process involves backing up a few things. Um, I have my YouTube channel content. I also have my, my work. Um, I also have pro project files that I work on that aren't necessarily directly related to my work. They're just general Revit libraries. So I keep these separate to most of my business folders. And then I just have everyday files like music and media and things that I add to um, over time. So obviously backing all these things up manually is a really slow and clunky process. And for a while, this is how I did it. Um, I just copied and pasted and replaced files and it's very slow. Um, I keep one physical backup on an external hard drive plugged into my laptop and then also a digital backup on Dropbox. Um, I find that you should always have at least one physical, one digital. That seems to be the rule of backing up properly. So I needed to find a way to sort of automate this. Um, so Dropbox actually offers what it calls an automated solution. Um, it added this, I think, in June or, or July, um, and it's pretty bad, I'll be honest. Um, it, it backs up your desktop documents and more. Um, more just means my downloads. <laughs> like, I mean, th these are locations no one would ever work out of in their right mind. Um, you should always work off of some sort of drive on your computer. So, you know, cue the bummer noise. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a great option. So I looked beyond this um, the moment that I saw this was available. The solution is a little program called Sync Toy. Now, Sync Toy is actually free. Um, so you can actually find it just by going to the Microsoft Store um, and downloading it. So it's built by Microsoft um, in order to back up Windows file structures. Um, it's super easy to set up. Um, you, you pretty much just install it and you're almost good to go. Um, at the moment, I use a Dropbox. Um, so what you do get when you use Dropbox is you get a Windows interface version um, on your computer as well. So this shows you your Dropbox file structure and it lets you copy and paste files uh, into and out of your Dropbox and also share folders as well. So I store a lot of files in Dropbox. You can see there's quite a few folders and files, um, but typically I try to keep them in sort of separate backup locations. You can see, for example, I'm backing up all my media, my Rhino files, my Revit files, and my work files. Also Aussie BIM Guru, um, and some other things like project records. And it's quite fragmented, but I can actually afford to keep it this way thanks to SyncToy. So I'll quickly actually show you what SyncToy looks like and what it does. Um, but this is essentially SyncToy here. And the way that SyncToy works is that you essentially build folder pairs. You tell one folder that it's gonna associate itself to another. So I can say create new folder pair and the folder on the left is where you're copying data from and the folder on the right is where you're copying data to. So for example, I can just take any old folder, um, let's just say, you know, I'll just take a random folder like my documents. And then I can pair it to another folder somewhere else. Um, I can pair this to say my music or my, my pictures. I'm, I'm not actually gonna run this particular pair of folders, um, but just as an example. And then it prompts you to either synchronize, echo or contribute. So depending on how you set this up, it will do different things. So synchronization um, will typically copy files in both directions and try to match the, the, the project folders. It assumes that you're working in both directories and it tries to find the most recent file on either side. Um, I use what's called a folder echo, which means that one, file should, one folder should always be the same on the destination side. 
So my backup is always meant to match my live project folder structure. So this will find renaming, deleting, and overwrite targets automatically for me. And then I think also contribute will keep any old files that don't exist in, on the other side. Um, but obviously for a backup process, this would build up a lot of waste. So typically I just use echo. Once you have this, this becomes a folder pair that's available in your folder pair tasks. For example, one of my folder pairs is to back up my work to my Dropbox. Now I haven't actually run a backup for a couple of days, um, so I will show you that process as well. Um, the great thing about SyncToy that I really like is you can preview what the backup's going to do. So you can run a test. So I can just run this, and this is, this is checking about 35,000 files at the moment. Um, in this case, actually no, it's got about 16,000 because I think I've omitted, um, I've omitted a couple of the folder pairs. So what I'll do is I'll do all folder pairs because that was a little bit too quick. <laughs> but you can see it's scanning everything essentially on both sides of the folder pairs. And now I can see it's deleting some folders, deleting some files, overriding some files, renaming, um, introducing some new files to the backup and also creating some new folders. Um, and you can sort of validate what's gonna happen first. You can also check the operations by type, which I find really convenient. And it just gives you a little summary of what's going to happen. Um, you can either run from there or you can go back and you can run just straight from the dialogue instead. So I'll just go run all. And essentially it just runs a synchronization between the two folders. Now anyone that uses Dropbox, you'll know that after this, it will start actually uploading the file to Dropbox once they're placed into Explorer. Um, but you can see it's very quick, very easy. Find, it finds all the changed files for you and it doesn't have to worry about overriding the files that haven't changed. So it's super convenient, it saves me so much time. Um, sometimes you'll get some failures. I find that usually the failures actually aren't failures, they tend to work, um, but it will let you review the, the warning messages as to what the failures might indicate. Um, sometimes if a file's in use, uh, it may not properly uh, schedule. Now what I'm showing you here is, it obviously is not a 100% automatic backup process. So I'm also gonna show you how you can schedule um, this to a Windows task, uh, so that once a week or twice a week or however often you want, you can make this run automatically. And this, this is obviously a big time saver. So you can see here there's a few, a few errors, uh, but I find that these errors typically don't matter. Like I always get an error on my client income table for some reason, um, even though it's always successfully overriding. So I'm not always sure why some of these things don't uh, synchronize. I can see some things like the actual sync toy settings. I've got a, something that pushes the settings over to Dropbox. And I know for a fact this task works, but for some reason it says it doesn't work. So I can update my sync toy settings to my backup using sync toy. <laughs> it, it's pretty fun. Um, anyway, so I'll show you how you can automate this process. Now there's a little guide in sync toy itself where they teach you how to schedule sync toy, uh, but I'll show you quickly what that process involves. So if I go to windows and I look for task scheduler, um, this is where you can actually set up tasks to run frequently on your computer. Um, you can use this for a variety of things. You can even set up backup processes without needing SyncToy if you want to put all the information here. If I create a basic task, and I just call this uh, weekly SyncToy, and you can give it a, des a description. Um, you can set a trigger. Let's say we're doing it on a weekly basis. We're gonna repeat it every week on a Friday at uh, 5.30 p.m. So when I'm, when I'm meant to finish work on a Friday, which usually isn't the case. <laughs> Um, you can set an action as well. So what, what happens when it happens, you wanna send an email. In this case, it says it's a deprecated function, so I'm not sure if that works. Um, but in this case, we're gonna start a program. In this case, we're gonna run SyncToy. So what I need to do is actually find the SyncToy folder. The easiest way I found to do this is just to find the app itself and right click on it, um, open file location. Now this will usually take you to a shortcut. If you right click properties, you should get a path to the start in location. If you paste this in and delete the double apostrophes, it will take you to the location of the, to of the files associated to the shortcut. Um, in this case, you wanna get the syncToy cmd.exe. Now this will run syncToy through the command prompt. So in this case, we just wanna add um, that in this case to our scheduler. So we're gonna find that, that file and you need to add the argument of dash r in order to run the program. And this will run all of your sync toy uh, pairings. There's, there's other things you can type in here if you just wanna run very particular pairings, not all of them, for example. Um, but from there, um, you can essentially just set up your, your weekly sync toy synchronization. 
and you don't even have to think about your scheduling. Now, I myself, I manually run my backup because I want to know exactly when I'm backing up. Um, but if you're really busy and you know, you're in a small business and you don't even want to think about your backup process, this might be the thing for you. So definitely keep this in mind. Um, and obviously make sure it's at a time that will always suit your business. You wouldn't want to be, say, in the middle of a client meeting and have your sync toy suddenly run. So if you keep your computer on all the time, maybe you could run it at you know one in the morning or something like that. Now I turn my computer off um, every day, so I guess um, in this case, maybe it's not suitable for, for me. Um, but hopefully this helps gives you a, a way that you can automate your backup if you're using Dropbox and save you a little bit of time that you can return back to maybe your small business. Um, and I just wanted to share this because I guess this has helped me a lot in saving really boring processes that obviously I don't want to be doing, um, essentially backing up files. So hopefully that helps. Um, the presentation will be on GitHub as always. Um, and thank you for watching the presentation. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. Um, I, I make videos typically one, once or twice a week. Um, it's going to be a bit more sporadic for the next few months. Uh, but I just wanted to share this the moment that I found it because I thought it was worth sharing with you all. So I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Uh, thanks. Take care. Bye.